Today is the 23rd Sunday of the year. Our Gospel text is taken from Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. It's Mark's account of Jesus healing the deaf mute. However, it's not the healing that I would like to focus on. It's the journey. Mark describes an extraordinary journey here in this passage and earlier ones leading into this passage. It is so extraordinary, in fact, that Matthew and Luke, both of whom depend very heavily on Mark normally, know nothing about this journey. Modern day scripture scholars are at variance as to what to make of it, because it is so extraordinary. I think it's reasonable to take it on face value that Jesus did make a very long journey Mark has him at Gennesaret, the northwestern edge of the Sea of Galilee. He leaves there and he goes right across to the area of Phoenicia. He's entered Gentile territory. This could be a dangerous, lonely place for a Jewish person. One could feel very vulnerable there. It is in Tyre that he encounters the Syrophoenician woman. And then Mark says, Jesus returned from the region of Tyre. He went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. Sidon's about 35 kilometers north of Tyre. So he's traveled northwest to Tyre goes a further 35 k's up to Sidon and then sweeps around the eastern edge of the lake, still in Gentile territory, comes right down to the Decapolis, which is at the southeastern edge of the lake. That's about 190 k's. He's on foot, remember. I think this suggests, amongst other things, we reflect on the role of solitude in the life of Jesus. You see, when he gets to the Decapolis and this healing of the deaf mute takes place, Mark says he took him to one side in private, away from the crowd. A little further on in Mark's Gospel, in chapter 8, there's a blind man who is healed by Jesus. Same thing. He took him to one side. And there are a couple of accounts in which he does this with the disciples. Takes them to one side. I think this invites a meditation on solitude. What is solitude? Well, to begin with, it's much, much more than simply being alone. In fact, you might be alone and not be in solitude. And you might be in a crowd and be in solitude. Solitude is being present to yourself. Thoughtfulness, reflectiveness, facing what you alone can and must face in life. The word solitude is rooted in the Latin word solus, meaning alone. It's presence. It's conscious, active, facing oneself. You can well imagine Jesus on this journey having long stretches of silence, maybe going off by himself and sitting down, apart. You can also imagine times when the presence of the disciples grated on him. Their naivete, their ignorance, their stupid questions. (laughs) You can imagine Jesus lying on the hard ground at night, looking at the cosmos, feeling reverence, awe, fear. Jesus, as portrayed by Mark, is a man who is utterly present to himself. And in that presence, he discovers who he is, what he is, 
what he must do. His presence to himself is a mark of authenticity which enables him to be present, intimate to the deaf mute when he comes across him in the Decapolis and the blind man later on. Solitude is part of our becoming human. Each of us must face, listen to, work with, submit to the truth of our own experience. No one else can do it for us. The more effectively we do that, the more present we will become to who and what we are, the less likely we will be to be in flight from the painful and the uncomfortable. Here's a thought. A very good reason for solitude is the practical one. The pain, the discomfort, the unpleasant stuff in my own experience, if I don't face it, listen to it, submit to the truth of it, process it as it were, in other words, engage in solitude, I'll project it onto the world. Consider the possibility that most of the conflict, most of the violence in our world, from the violence in our homes to the violence on international borders and in, in countries throughout the world. Violence is the result of inner violence. Solitude is the way to be responsible, to submit to the truth of it, so that in being present beyond the violence and the conflict and the terror that it might present me, I can then be present to the world as an instrument of peace and healing. Solitude is also about identity. I'd like to link it with baptism in this regard. As one baptized into Christ, my deepest identity is my life in Christ. St. Paul, writing to the Galatians, sums it up better than anybody. I live now, not I. Christ lives in me. That's my identity. Each of us can say that. Solitude, this being present to oneself, is a way of enabling the truth of my life in Christ to come into being. Solitude is the servant of baptism. Let me read to you a few words from Thomas Merton on this point. From the very beginning, it is evident that the most fundamental question raised by baptism is our true identity. When an adult presents himself or herself for baptism, they are supposed to have entered within themselves. Solitude. To have struggled as far as they could to dispel all their illusions about themselves. To come to some rough answer to the questions, who do I think I am? What do I think I am doing? And why do I think I am doing it? Here's a little exercise. Imagine Jesus on his geographical journey. The really profound thing is here that the real journey Jesus is on is an inner journey. He must make it. You and I must make it. Be with him on the way. What's it like? What's it experience? What's the experience for you? Face it. Be in solitude. 